About two weeks ago, I've been approached by Motorola Solutions through email to join a meeting today. Now, as there are no live meetings right now going on, it's an online meeting, it's a Zoom meeting, and they want me to be with, with a launch. So, that's what I'm going to do. And it, it has been some time that Motorola Solutions launched a product or a solution online. I can actually not remember that they did that. Um, in the past, we introduced products at an exhibition, at a trade show. But today, it's the 27th of October, and that's a special day. They didn't want to tell me what it was all about. The only thing they told me is that there is a launch, you need to be there, it's for press, so I'm press, uh, and, and just take a look. And I'm waiting at the moment on what's happening. It is 10.50, the meeting starts at 11 o'clock sharp. Well, and there's another thing. The good thing is after the presentation has been done, I'm having a meeting with one of the representatives. I'm not sure with who. Uh, and we're going to talk about that new product or service or I don't know, network, whatever it is. What launch meeting, install Zoom? I thought I installed Zoom. Probably I'm doing something wrong here. I'm registered. It's three minutes past 11 right now. The presentation of Motorola Solutions should have been started already. So let me try to log in again. So search, allow, launch meeting again. I really don't know what's wrong here. Um, so I, I launched the meeting. I'm on the general tab. Everything should be fine. Okay, so I'm registering again. <laughs> There's another challenge. Just before the meeting starts, my my keyboard does not have any power anymore left, so it seems not to register, so that's a bummer. All right. No further ado, I will introduce our great panel, which consists of today Michael Kay, who is our regional vice president for Europe, who will talk about, you know, the challenges frontline officers are facing today. Then we will have Ian Williams joining. He will tell from his experience what a lifeline is for public safety. Then we are very honored to have Claire Power, um, director from Police Now joining us, um, who will tell us a bit about the needs and expectations of the new generation of police officers. Then we come to the even more exciting part of our launch um, with Katia Millar, who will speak about our vision around the solution that we are launching today. And then finally, we'll come to the solution itself with Stuart Longley, Senior Product Manager for Devices, launching the next gen Tetra solution. So with no further ado, I will hand over. And then on to... the device management side, as you can imagine, those radio fleet managers or device fleet managers out there today, it's a pain point. We've made that easier with the new product we're gonna to introduce today, but we will also make that easier for the ecosystem, giving options to charge these different devices in the same way at the same time, but also to manage the different devices, the pairing of the devices, um, the health of the devices, etc. I'm really excited to introduce to you all today our first part of that solution, and that's the new MXP600. And this MXP600, the latest and greatest of Motorola Tetra, was just launched today. Okay, so the press launch of the MXP600 has brought us a lot of new developments in Tetra. A lot of new exciting developments in Tetra, specifically for those people working in the field. Okay, let me start with one of the first things that caught my eye, actually. One of the most eye-catching developments that was integrated into this new Tetra radio is the addition of multiple microphones into the radio. Noise cancelling algorithms and the fact that the loudspeaker of the radio can act as a microphone for wind noise mitigation. So the software automatically detects, in this case, wind and then switches on the speaker in order to function as a microphone. I cannot recall that I've ever seen this development previously by any other Tetra manufacturer. So if that is the case, please let me know. 
Furthermore, the radio detects the location for where the officer is speaking and focuses on this position and only transmit the voice of the officers and not from the people directly around this officer. Hmm. Also, Motorola implemented automatic hauling suppression into the radio. By the way, this device is the loudest Tetra device Motorola Solutions has ever made. It's so loud that it's nearly four times louder than a typical smartphone. So when we talk about voice, yeah, I can say that they really hit the nail on the head. A demonstration video, by the way, of the sound quality can be found in the description below the video. Furthermore, it's the smallest class free Tetra solution Motorola ever made. So let's talk about weight. With 200 grams, it's a very light radio. However, it still has big physical buttons that everybody wants. Even the keypad and the screen is bigger than previous generations Motorola Tetra devices. Also, the MXP600 is IP68 water resistant. Wait a minute, IP68 water resistance, I call this waterproof. Okay, so it's the most water resistant Tetra Radio Motorola solutions ever developed. In other words, public safety agencies and other people working in the outside environment will love this radio. With a high capacity battery, the device can be used up to 30 hours in normal communications conditions. All right. One of the features of the radio is that the radio can be controlled with a smartphone. I hear you say, what? A smartphone? Yes, you heard this very well. It's even possible to use your touchscreen of the smartphone to control the radio. Especially for younger generation people, this is a great solution as they prefer to use touchscreen of their smartphones in sending messages, for example. So Motorola Solutions names this as the M-Radio controller. The app can be installed on the Android smartphone and can be used immediately. I'm only not sure if the app is also available in the App Store. Okay, that will probably come later. As you all know, pairing your smartphone with a radio can be sometimes a pain in the especially for public safety officers when they are in a briefing room at the police station, for example, where everyone needs to pair the radio with the smartphone at the same time. That is exactly why Motorola Solutions came up with NFC pairing. NFC pairing lets you tag two devices together so you don't need to pick your device from the list. This is done automatically. The smartphone reads this NFC tag directly from the radio and connects instantly. According to NIST, this is one of the most secure ways of pairing. And if this is not enough, Motorola Solutions decided to implement OTAP for programming, over the air programming. So when you need to change settings, contacts menu in the radio, this will be done over the air. And it can even be used via SDS messaging. However, this will only allow small updates, of course. All in all, with the MXP600, Motorola Solutions created the most intelligent Tetra radio on the market today, and it really looks like the company is focused to support the Tetra end user base and Tetra future end user base. Let's talk to Stuart Longley. He's the product manager of Motorola Solutions. I'm going to ask him some questions. I got a lot of questions actually about this new radio, about this new device, about this new Tetra device because that means that Motorola Solutions has invested in Tetra again and will probably keep on investing in Tetra technology going forward, specifically with the focus of public safety and other vertical markets of course. It's great to, to be here just after the introduction of this new Tetra radio and, and I'm, I'm full with questions about this new exciting device. Uh, I think you're excited as well, right? I'm, I'm very excited. It's, it's great to be doing a product launch and it's a pity that we can't be speaking face to face today, but it's still really exciting to be doing a, doing a proper product launch and taking questions about it. And uh, for me, the MXP600, it's one of the most exciting Tetra devices that we've launched for a long time. Yeah, because Tetra, I was surprised. Actually, I was not surprised because you guys are so much focused on your existing customer base. Um, so further development, development into Tetra, further development into the technology, specifically on the devices. So does that match and does that synchronize also with the development of the infrastructure? Yeah, so LMR is not going anywhere. At Motorola, we're committed to LMR, by which I mean land mobile radio, traditional two-way radio communications, both infrastructure and devices. 
many of our customers are uh, committing to the use of Tetra for at least the next 10 years. And they're telling us how much they value the use of traditional LMR. And remember that Tetra is much more of a long life cycle device than a consumer device where you might be changing it every two or three years. Typically, we see our customers extending the life of their devices for seven, eight, nine, sometimes 10 years or more. So we're expecting this to be around for a lot longer. We're expecting Tetra and LMR networks to still be around for some time to come. Okay. Now, when we look at the device, and uh, you were talking about programming, and you can program over the air, that's great. Uh, it makes everything much easier. However, there is one step before programming the radios over the air. That's programming the radios uh, to do the fleet map. And, and with all of these new features, with all of these new possibilities, and specifically software features, does it not become more difficult to program or to, to run a fleet map on a, on a device? Um, not significantly compared to our current generations. In fact, software has become a lot easier for people to understand because we've actually um, put together a lot of our software licenses into packages to make it much easier for people to understand and apply those licenses to individual radios. The programming software as well is the same programming software that people will be used to for uh, using Motorola radios. We've got two different types of programming software depend on whether you want to program individual devices where we have our CPS software, customer programming mm -hmm. software, or if you're managing large fleets, we have our ITM software, which is suitable for managing large fleets of radios. Typically with our current portfolio, you'd have used ITM alongside these multi-unit chargers that can program several radios at the same time to give them firmware upgrades or to load the code plugs in in the first instance. That still exists. We're still absolutely supporting that. We're just adding this extra option to ITM of now being able to do Wi-Fi updates as well. So when you're programming new firmware, when you're adding new code plugs in, then you can just click a button in ITM and have it do it over Wi-Fi instead of over that cabled connection. So it's the same tools that people are familiar with. It means that there's not a lot of retraining for staff to have to learn how to use the new tools, but they're just increasing their efficiency of not having to spend so much time managing the logistics of exactly where radios are, getting them back to to the central That was place. a nightmare in the old days. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's what they've told us. That's one of their main pain points. They're spending so much time working out whose radios are where and tracking them down and bringing them to the right place rather than spending their time doing what they want to be doing, which is making sure that, you know, they're staying up to date with security best practice by keeping the latest software updates on their radios, that they're taking advantage of some of the new features that we're putting in. You know, we are giving people the ability to connect now to mobile phones and pair them and you might choose not to deploy that straight away but to turn on bluetooth in in the future and wi-fi over the air programming means that you can just flip that bluetooth switch on people's devices much easier than if you were to bring them back in and reprogram them there's lots of features that you'll be familiar with we we introduce new features every year on our devices and now it's going to be so much easier for people to actually put those into practice in the field rather than sticking with the same decisions they made five or six years ago just because programming is, is a pain point for them. Okay. Okay. Well, launching a product, uh, launching a radio, a Tetra radio specifically, that back can be controlled through an app. Where did you get that idea from? Um, well, to be honest, it's the same place that we get a lot of our ideas from, and that's from talking to our customers and speaking to the market and listening to them and seeing how they use devices and um, and what it is that they want to get through them. And we spent a lot of time speaking with both people who are involved in procuring radios and people who are you involved in using radios to find out a lot more about how they wear devices on their body, how they interact with them, and how that's changed now that a really large percentage of our customer base are carrying phones at the same time as carrying radios with them. Where do they carry their radio and where do they carry their phone? Which ones are they pulling out? Which ones are they using for different tasks? And so it kind of fell into place 
from there, we we want to take advantage of the fact that a big percentage of our customers have this great touchscreen device that's already on their person, but it's not as rugged or as waterproof as perhaps a Tetra radio is. It doesn't have the same loud audio volume, the same noise cancellation. But let's take advantage of that. Let's make these yeah. two things work together. So it really fits in with the modern way of working for for police forces and for other public safety users. Yeah, it's a big change. I've never seen it somewhere else. It's for the first time in the industry that something has been developed. So we're, I'm really, really looking forward how to see that in action, actually. Stuart, the MXP600, it's, it, it looks like a great device. It's class three radio, tetra radio. It's targeted for public safety, but where does it exactly fit in the portfolio of tetra radios of Motorola solutions? So it's, it kind of represents to us a new generation of Tetra device with that connectivity that's built into it. Um, really, I think that it's the best device that, that we've made. And I can see a lot of police forces, a lot of public safety users, as they're bringing new people into the workforce and they're replacing their fleets or they're procuring new devices, they're going to be selecting this device and using that for the future. So it's kind of it's an addition to our portfolio as it stands at the moment. It's not immediately replacing anything else that goes into the portfolio, but I think it's going to be a really successful um, part of it and really play a big part in the future of our Tetra devices. Okay. And it's available right now? It's available, well, from next week. So we'll <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's right now. It's live on the website. We can, uh, we can quote it for you, and uh, we're shipping from, from the end of next week. So um, we have we have several customers lined up. All right, I'm looking forward to, uh, to to test that device in the future if there is any possibility to see how that works uh, and and with a Bluetooth as well, with a pairing as well, because there are so many new features. But it really looks like that you guys didn't sit still over the last few years. You you worked your butts off to get it to a new radio onto the market. Yeah, the team's put in a lot of effort actually to, to make this work really well. And it's been, uh, been a great collaborative effort across Motorola with designers and audio engineers in one country, hardware engineers and software engineers elsewhere, and people supporting our beta trials with field engineering teams across Europe and across Asia. So really one of the great advantages of Motorola is that we're a global company and we, we've it's been a great fun project to work on actually with with so many different teams involved and so many great colleagues all over the world okay Stuart, thank you very much for this uh, short interview much appreciated uh, i'm looking forward to see you and to meet you in one of the live events coming up hopefully next year probably not this year anymore um, uh, otherwise we'll just continue to see each other online right yeah absolutely thanks a lot and look forward to it thanks very much all right bye Stuart.